guys. Hope everybody's having a good day. <clears throat> this here is a VR to Mr. Mexican Piper. Who hit 100 subs. And he's doing a little giveaway. Congrats on that, my friend. Fantastic accomplishment. You've got good content, so you're going you're gonna to garner a lot more subs than that. I just cracked a 10. Dark Strong, Kentucky. One of my favorites. I'm smoking it in this little Dagner Canadian. Great little pipe. Mm. Good stuff. Good stuff. So Mexican Piper uh, asked two questions. One was, what was the, our favorite book that we read last year? I read 40 last year. I went back and looked at them. And um, as you can tell, it was hard to pick a favorite. <laughs> like picking a favorite song or favorite child or something. But anyway, I'll go through a few of them and then tell you what my favorites were. I read a lot of war, war history, uh, personal accounts, things like that. Some good ones I read last year was Vietnam, A History by Stanley Carno. It's an absolutely fantastic book. With the Old Breed by Eugene Sledge. It's another great one. Tells of his uh, trials and Travails and Peleliu and uh, Okinawa, serving with the Marines in World War II. Uh, another essential war book is called The Things They Carried by Tim O'Brien. He was a journalist over in Vietnam, and uh, The Things They Carried is just a great book. Kind of puts you in the mind of the the foot soldier and what they went through on a daily basis. Dispatches by Michael Herr. A large, large section of uh, Full Metal Jacket was written with dispatches in mind. So, needless to say, it's a gripping book. Uh, unbelievably gripping book about Vietnam. I read um, Shelby Foote's Civil War series, a three volume set, a comprehensive look at the Civil War by an excellent writer. I read Winston Churchill's six-volume set on World War II. Again, a comprehensive, absolutely comprehensive look at, at World War II through the eyes of Winston Churchill. Personal recollections, telegrams, letters, uh, meetings that he was in. I mean, some of the, in the finest details of what was going on, what he was thinking, what other people were thinking. took a while to churn through that one. It ended up being about, altogether, those books were about uh, right at 5,000 pages, the World War II one. I read um, non-military stuff. I'm going to save one because it's one of my best of this year. Non-military stuff, I read a book called The Closing of the American Mind that was written in 
the late 70s or early 80s by a man named Alan Bloom. And it looks at how uh, how teaching our kids has changed as far as at a university level and how people think and how people don't think and how we got here and where we're going and that kind of stuff. Very good read if you're into that kind of stuff. I read uh, some classics, Papillon, Henri Charer. Better than the movie, and the movie's killer. Great book. To Kill a Mockingbird I read for the first time last year. Thoroughly enjoyed that. One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. I've never seen the movie, so. And I wanted to read the book first. And I'm afraid the movie's not going to be able to touch the book. At least Ken Kesey didn't think so. I read a couple of great biographies. One on the golfer Ben Hogan. One on Payne Stewart. Both of them were fantastic reads. One was written by a Hogan historian. One was written by Payne Stewart's wife. So those are both uh, pretty intimate looks into their lives and who they were. Uh, that leads. That brings me to the. Uh, the two best books I read last year, and I, I say two because they were completely different books, and I would throw that Vietnam history into this level as well, but the first one was a military uh, book called We Die Alone by a man named Howarth. It was about a guy named Jan Balsrud, who was a soldier in Norway during World War II escaped to Britain during the Nazi occupation. Did some training over there and put together a, a group of guys that were going to come back to Norway uh, and train people to be resistance fighters. Well, him and three other guys made it back into the bay that they were shooting for. And soon after they landed, their mission got compromised. And he alone escaped. And it's the story of his escape and survival in uh, extreme northern Norway in 1943, running from the Nazis. And it is unbelievable. Uh, unbelievable story. His initial escape, right after they, their mission got compromised, he lost his shoes, or at least one of them. He was shot. He had no weapons, no survival gear except what he had, his clothes. And he had about a 200-yard lead on the Nazis that were chasing him, trailing blood, and he managed to get away. And the, the months that followed, or just, it's absolutely gripping read. I highly recommend it. We Die Alone. The author's last name is Howarth. The other one was a series of books that I read by a man named Conrad Richter. Uh, there were three, three books, The Trees, The Fields, and The Town but they were all wrapped together. Followed the lives of a family in uh, the early 1800s that set out from, I think it was Pennsylvania, to find better hunting ground and make a life for themselves. It went through three or 
think four generations, I can't remember, but it, it really followed the, the history of three of those generations. As they made their way to their new home and uh, fought the elements and built a new life. And great read. It's a really good read. Uh, used a lot of the language at that time. But it was really good. I enjoyed all of that. Like I said, I read 40 books last year. There were very few that I didn't like. I didn't finish a couple just because they were dragging on and not doing it for me. But I've read 13 so far this year, or I'm almost through with the 13th. I'm trying to dig into some classics this year. I'm working on Crime and Punishment right now by Dostoevsky. second question that Mr. Mexican Piper asked was, have you ever been to Mexico? Where was it? Or would you like to go to Mexico and where? Closest I've been is El Paso, Texas. I would like to go someday. Uh, I'm not much of a, a touristy kind of guy or a stuff like that, so I'd probably stay away from Cancun and Cabo and Puerto Vallarta and stuff like that, but I totally dig the natural beauty of the land, and there's some really beautiful places down there. I was looking some up on, I dig around on Google Earth a lot, looking at stuff, photos, and some of the places I came across I'll probably butcher the the language here, so excuse me. One of them was uh, the area around Laguna Madre and the Delta del Rio Bravo, uh, Cumbres de Monterrey, Punta Chivato, and uh, the Isla San Marcos, a uh, place called La Angostura, Sante Com Comapan and Monte Pio. That's the kind of places I think I would like to visit. Mountains, uh, natural areas where you know, rivers and inlets come in, and just some beautiful spots. I, I was really knocked out by some of the stuff I saw in those places. Don't get me wrong, if somebody offered me a trip to Cancun, I would probably take it. But I probably wouldn't be laying out on the beaches and going to the hotels and bars and all that stuff. I would be digging around trying to find the places nobody else finds. But, uh, so there, there you go. I'm going to go finish this Dark Strong Kentucky. Congrats on your subscribers. Congrats on your channel. Hope you get some good responses. I've already seen a couple of good ones. And I hope you have a great week. Take care.